Hey everybody, so today we're going to discuss the basics of dream interpretation with God through the biblical lens. It seems like dreams play a major role in scriptures. Think about the role that dreams played in the lives of Daniel, Jesus, and Joseph, and many other biblical characters. And just think about this for a minute. One third of the Bible is directly or indirectly related to dreams, which I think is really profound. And also, God literally used dreams to give and fulfill messianic prophecies, which I think is pretty incredible. Think about how much sleep the average human needs. Science tells us that most people on average require about eight hours of sleep, some require more, some require less. But essentially imagine the possible revelation that's awaiting you while you slumber. And I'm just going to read a little bit of scripture here out of Job 33 verse 14 through 17. Just kind of talks about how God gives the ability to interpret dreams. And so here we go. The Bible says, For God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. In a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions in order to turn men from his deeds and conceal the pride of man. And so here it just kind of talks about how God gives the ability to interpret dreams. And I think that's really important to discuss and know. And also, God gives us dreams to encourage us, to keep us from sin, and to instruct us. And I'll go through another couple biblical pat passages just to kind of reaffirm that. And we're going to start in Genesis 20, where God gives Abimelech a dream. And we read, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for he is a man's wife. And that was Abraham's wife that Abimelech had taken from Abraham. And God came to Abimelech in the nighttime and told him that basically you were going to die because you took another man's woman. And so I think that also kind of shows us a little bit of God's heart for marriage and just his covenant with his people. Just a little side fact. Uh, the next scripture we're going to jump to is Genesis 37. Verses 5 through 11. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around me and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. Then he dreamed still another dream, and told it to his brothers, and said, Look, I have had another dream. And this time, the sun, moon, and even eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and even his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and all your brothers indeed come and bow down to you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept this matter in mind. So again, it's just kind of showing that God gives dreams to instruct, keep us from sin, and encourage us. The last place we're going to look is Judges 7, verse 13 through 15 where Gideon hears a dream that really encourages him. And so we read in verse 13, And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. 
He said, I had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf, loaf of barley tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard the dream and the telling of its interpretation that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. And so I think it's really encouraging for us to basically just see that God does give dreams for a purpose. You know, some dreams are just kind of weird and you can't understand them, but I'd say 90% of all dreams have a purpose and God's wanting to actually talk to you through your dreams. And one more scripture we're going to go through, Daniel 117, basically just talks about how God gives the ability to understand dreams. And so we read in Daniel 117, talking about Daniel, God gave Daniel, oh, excuse me, God gave them wisdom and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So once again, I think it's just clarifying that God gives understanding in all dreams and visions. And so with that in mind, let's practice a little. Um, basically, you have a dream, or in this case, we'll talk about somebody else having a dream and you interpreting it. So basically, when was the dream, or how long ago was it? Some people have recurring dreams, some people just had a dream last night, you know, it really just kind of depends. So let them f fully describe their dream, don't interrupt them, just listen. Um, I know people tend to have a desire to interrupt, especially if they feel like God's on it. Um, but just be patient and listen because you actually want to be listening really intentionally because you're actually going to repeat it back to them in summary after you let them tell you all about it. And yeah, it could be a nightmare. Um, and in that case, you're going to want to do a couple different things. And we'll talk about that after this, but then have them repeat it back to you in summary and then ask them to title the dream and give you one of the big main parts or the most significant part to them. And then, so that's them doing that, naming it and identifying the most important part. And then your part is to identify three to five main symbols that relate to the main focus. And now would be the time to ask any clarifying questions because in a minute you're going to ask God what the symbols mean and how to put them together. And basically this is when Holy Spirit just comes and tells you what it means. You know, the Bible says God will give you understanding and that's the truth. So, yeah, ask any clarifying questions like if you're confused on any points because we need to get clarity if we're going to go ask God how to interpret this dream. And so, yeah, basically just pray, ask what the symbols mean. There are some general meanings for some symbols, but it can also get a little muddled and confused with like New Age and um, occultist practices, which aren't desirable. So that's why we just ask God, because he knows he gave the dream. And God will give you clarity and wisdom and what the dream means and how to interpret it. And again, if it's a nightmare, contrast it and prophesy hope into the situation. 
a lot of people tend to have nightmares, but God could actually be speaking something deeper through them. And so we just want to prophesy light and hope into that situation. And so these are just some of the basics that I wanted to run through today. Please comment, let me know if I missed anything. God bless and I hope you have a great day.